Hey, welcome back to Spirit Music Meetups. Mike Burroughs here, making drumming great again. I know you're thrown off. I usually wear a red hat, but I've got different color hats. Just like my red hat, I like some color. Don't like blue, black, eh, not much color. Hey, we're on part 9B as in boy to apply part 9A. So we found out that faith, trusting, relying faith that makes everything possible in the Christian life, that is, uh, we're going to just tilt this a little bit. I don't know how that gets off. It doesn't come from reading Bibles or studying Bibles. Um, in fact, all that will just wear you out. <laughs> Guarantee you. It comes by hearing a cool, the directly spoken word of Christ. It only takes one word, singular. And it's stated very clearly. We have to hear from the Lord. That's the whole promise of the New Covenant. We've seen this all along in every single blog. It comes down to direct communication, direct teaching by the Lord, okay? So don't get distracted. Don't think it's like um, the scribes and Pharisees. They didn't get any faith. So we need faith by coming in directly to the Lord. And so we need to go to the right person for faith. We need to go to Christ for faith. He will give us faith. It comes from hearing the same power that created the universes, right, and that hold the universes together by the singular word of Christ. That is what can produce faith in you. Faith is in your mouth and in your heart. It's that near us. It's not out there floating around somewhere in the pages of a book. Nope. It's hearing. And we need to hear. Akuo means literally to hear. <laughs> Right? He can show you words, too. You know, watch in prayer. You know, this whole watching thing. I have, go look at prayer page. And you see this word watching showing up all the time when it comes to prayer. And the rhema word of God. It always shows up. Because a picture is a thousand words. You know? So God can get to us through pictures. And that's what visions and dreams are about. Prophecy. And that's what we were promised in the New Covenant, is to hear directly through prophecy. Prophecy means um, understanding the rhema word, so it's prophetic rhema. Understanding the rhema word of God. One way or another, we understand it. So, let's apply this. And it's right near our mouth, in us, in our mouth, and in our hearts. So we don't have to look out way far away. <laughs> They're going to be right in here, right in here. That's where it's going to come, right? In our mouth, in our heart. So with our mouth, we confess, right? And with our heart, we have trusting, relaying faith. So it really, a lot of things have to do with your innermost being. Your heart is representative of your innermost being. And so we also know that as important as preaching is, that the Logos word is the message. That's the gospel message. That's the word of God is the gospel message in the New Testament. You can see that Logos word of God. So, as important that is, it's really hearing the voice of Christ through the words of Paul, Peter, Mike Burroughs, whoever it is. We have to Listen past all those words, and then we'll get it. And then there's, we know that there's three families of tongues, and one of them is directed to unbelievers to hear the message. Christ is going to speak through tongues and interpret it directly inside them, so there's no need for us to do any interpretation. So, Lord, I ask that... I don't script any of these, so I'm right with you, and I'm showing you how I do it. Maybe you have another way to do it. Please share that with us in the comments. Please show, share that with us in the comments. It's Because the Lord speaks through everyone in his body, and we need to listen to each other and learn, Paul says, so that we all weigh in together, 1 Corinthians 14, 20, 27, 29, somewhere in there, 
that we all take turns listening to each other and then all take turns weighing in together uh, interacting dia, dia, dia correct crino means to uh, to judge through judge through this back and forth thoroughly judge to thoroughly critique what is being going on right it's to add to understand through this back and forward this through thing where we get diameter so it's a really interesting word and then so we can all learn he says together that's montano we can all learn montano the key facts everything that we need the keys <laughs> we need to learn from one another and be encouraged together that's paracleo that's that alongside oh we got a little kitty here by us on the windowsill <laughs> he comes every time i get into this right is amazing he must just sense the word of the lord grama and he just wants to be near it isn't it beautiful he sits up on the counter uh, on my windowsill outside my window right now neighborhood cat so we're going to apply this prophetically so lord right now as with my drum declarations, I am believing, I'm trusting, relying, putting my weight on you, that you're going to send out your rhema word to many who don't even know you. And they're going, they're, they're going to hear your rhema word through my words. I don't even know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to let you say it, Lord. You said that you would give me, us, all of us, in that very moment, that very moment, that opportune time, that what to say. So we don't have to stress. We don't have to worry. We don't have to, you know, plan ahead. <laughs> I love these sermons, sermons these guys come up with. They write it out on their iPad. This guy would read off his iPad every, at the United Christ, United Methodist that I, I was hired for a year to play with. I was watching this guy, the head pastor, uh, a real nice guy, but here he is reading from his iPad. Wow, that was really inspiring. That was terrible. I almost fall asleep, drool out of the side of my mouth. And it was all, oh, it was flowery. It was perfect. You know, he, 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 this is what he was taught. Oh my gosh. This is, this is planning ahead. There, there's no spirit in it. There was no spirit. He used his might and power and his skill to create this sermon. And that's how important, impressed people. Oh, that was really impressive. It was boring people to death. They were, crying out of the side of their eyes. They're slobbering down, drooling out of the side of their face. But you know how I knew the massive difference. They got this kid that was uh, just really young at it, maybe in his 20s. He was a youth minister. And he got up there. He had to take over for Mark one of these times when Mark was out. And he, he didn't have anything. It was sort of real rough. He, he didn't have this iPad. He wasn't a polished speaker. Thank God. And he went up there and he he preached what the Lord was telling him. <laughs> he was in touch, right? But <clears throat> even in the United Methodist Church, he was in touch. He was hearing from the Lord because he was with little children. You have to be with little children. The secrets in the kingdom of God are revealed to these little children, not these so-called wise and understanding ones. I don't know if Mark had a clue, but... You know, he was a nice guy, but I'll tell you, I was, when, when I heard him uh, out from his heart, the Spirit was speaking. Um, man, I came really close to just the power of the rhema word that was coming out of his, and it was, it was not eloquent. There was no great wisdom, no eloquent speech. Paul said, I did not come to you with all this BS. I came to you with demonstrable power of the Holy Spirit. No kidding. So when this guy, he, he had fire, and he was revealing simple things that he was seeing in his classes, and I, I came so close to just bawling like a baby. I was so hit, so powerfully, so few sermons I've ever heard. And I cannot tell you what he said. But it radically wasted me, man. I was ready to confess all my sins. I, I felt so cut to the heart. And it was, it, was just about, it was just about the innocence of childhood or something. I, 
but I know he was doing his work in me because I'm not an emotional person. And it was everything to keep from bawling. Everything. And I said, man, am I going to let this happen? Because they're going to think I'm a fruitcake. I'm hired a drummer. I should have just, just excused myself and went in the back room and just conf- laid flat. And con- I mean, I was feeling the holiness of God. I looked around. I was like, nobody's getting this? Man, I'm alive. That's the rhema word of Christ. The rhema word of Christ. And um, I told the, I told this young man, I said, man, let go, surrender. Don't be like Mark. Don't try to polish it. Let the Lord speak through you. You know, people may some people may not get it. They like this religious frivolousness, this, this pomp and circumstance, you know. But I'm telling you, the rhema word of God went out from that man. I told him, I said, the rhema word of God. I can tell you, I've sat through thousand sermons. Very few actually, boom, you know, boom, one-two punch. And I'm not emotional, so it's not an emotional thing. It's the power of God. So let's do that and... On the day of Pentecost, it cut people to the heart. What was spoken was the magnificent things of God. And it cut those people to the heart. 3,000 were baptized that day. So I don't know, Lord. I, I, I'm trusting that you're going to say your rhema word. I'm here, willing vessel. You speak your rhema word out there, however you want to speak it. Okay? However you want to speak it. I'm an instrument for your righteousness, and this is what we want to do, you want to do. You know, let your instrument become an instrument of righteousness, offering our bodies as living sacrifices, offering the members of us as as instruments of righteousness. To do thy kingdom come, thy will be done. To destroy the works of the devil, right? To bind and loose. And faith comes from hearing that rhema, word of Christ. Not mine. I don't even know what I'm going to say. So I'm just going to let the Lord say it. And we're going to do this while psalming. I'm going to just let go and let God. I'm not going to try to create this in my head. I'm just letting the Holy Spirit flow through me. So just invite this. Don't don't resist it. Let him take you where it goes, wherever it is. Don't judge it. Don't say, oh, that sounds, that's no good. No, I don't like that. No, that's just saying to the Holy Spirit, I know better than you, right? And you, you might say, oh, he's just drunk. He's stammering. He doesn't make any sense. He just discounted. Let's turn this video off. Well, it's not meant for you, evidently, <laughs> right? I have to believe that what's going to come out now And you have to do this too when you play. You have to have faith that the Lord knows what he's doing. He's the master. I'm going to move this because I don't need this. I might have to keep it from turning off on me. You know, Lord told me before, and He's telling me now, even your play is sending out sound waves, rhema words. Rhema words are word, words are just His way of saying things. You don't understand tongues, you don't understand this. You don't understand what's being said there, just like you don't understand tongues. I don't even understand them. Now, you're only going to understand them if the Lord interprets them. He said same thing with psalmy. You know, the prophets in the in the tent of tabernacle, right? The tent of meeting with David uh, way back, right? He had all these musicians and they were all prophets and they were prophesying 
by their instruments. It wasn't they were prophesying when they weren't playing. No, he says they were prophesying. They were speaking the mind of God while they were playing their instruments. You know, that's an amazing thing. That's a new song. That's what anointed, prophetic, spontaneous drumming is. Anointed, prophetic, spontaneous drumming. APSD. could feel it see it turned off on me sorry about that guys I can't I'm not paying attention practice bed and the Lord has taken those sound waves in the name of Jesus by his name by his authority and by his power the power of his rainbow word and he's amplifying it he showed me the holy angels take those and amplify them they're ministering angels so he's sending those waves out amplifying them building them up making them louder and louder and stretching them out to the whole universe to the whole United States to the whole uh, state of Arizona to the whole city of Tucson. That's what he's doing in the name of Jesus. He showed me this. And he's changing, he's interpreting the sound waves, right? He's translating them. He's translating them into his directly understandable to them, whoever it is, them, he chooses. It says, Peter said on the day of Pentecost, and this promise is for you and for all those who are far off, all those whom the Lord thy God has called or will call. I'd have to look it up. But who yeah, calls, those whom he is going to call to be his own. So you have to be called to be his own, right? God's outside of time. He already knows if you're going to shut the door in his face a hundred times. If you call him, if he calls you, hey, I'm going to call you a hundred times. You're going to shut the door on my face a hundred times. I already know that. I know your heart. I know it's it's a closed book. It doesn't it doesn't want me at all. So just like with, uh, Mo, with um, Pharaoh. Pharaoh hardened his heart four times. God knew he was going to harden his heart four times. But he kept bringing on these amazing miracles. And it should have made his heart soft. He should have been broken down. Any normal man would be broken down and say, You're right. Your God is the God of Israel. You're, the God of Israel is the God of the universe, the God of the world. And I'm not a God. But they believed that they were God. Pharaoh believed he was a God. And he couldn't understand how you know, Moses was one-upping him. So he hardened his heart four times. And then it says the God, and then the Lord hardened his heart the next six times. Why? Let's speed this process up. Let's bring even more magnificent, outrageous miracles. And it will cause all the people of Israel to go, oh, that's our Lord. That's our God. He isn't hurting us. Look at all these people that are his enemies and how he's just coming down. He's judging his enemies. You know, this is before the age of grace. <laughs> you know, hey, get on the wrong side of God before the age of grace. You were done. You were cooked. That's because there was no sacrifice for sins. 
hey, this is long before the sacrifice of sins. Way, way before that. So, man, see how God has moved us to the sacrifice of sins. One Lamb of God taking away the sins of the world. If we didn't have the Lamb of God right now, there would be serious judgments. This world would be just laid to waste by the judgments of God. A holy and pure God looking at such deceit, fraud, uh, of every kind from so many leaders, from so many people, from average Joe Blows, from all of us. He would just say, I have, I have want nothing to do with it. Boom! Let's get over, let's get this over, you know, let's do the, the whole Noetic flood, flood again. But he made a promise to Noah, I won't ever do that. I won't destroy the whole world because of, of evil. Okay, there's only eight people there who, who were not evil to the bone. And they even had problems later on. It's inherent in us. But he didn't destroy the world. He says, I promise. He gave us a rainbow saying, I won't destroy the world again by water. He ends up destroying it. Peter talks about this. He's going to destroy it with fire. He's going to just peel back the atmosphere, roll it up like a scroll. It's just fire. The whole atmosphere, we know all it takes is one good um, giant solar flare from our sun, and we're done. We're cooked. It'll burn up our atmosphere, and then the solar winds will come in and fry us. We'll all be 300 degrees instant crispy critters. So that's all it takes, and he says this is how it will be destroyed. New heavens and earth, new earth will be created after the Lord deals with this. That's the final judgment. And he's just going to lay it to waste. That was it. End of experiment. So he gets his job done, and then he just destroys it all. He just says, have to consume it. Our God is a consuming fire. <laughs> Burns it all up. Nothing left. And how he does that, doesn't matter. He's going to do it. So here we go. So that was a rhyme of word. The Lord gave, I'm just going with what he gives me. I didn't think about any of this. I was actually hearing, I was hearing this, and my drumming ended up coming out sort of like I was hearing. I'm hearing this. You know, rhythms, it's, it's very interesting. I think we're going to deal with this in the next block. You know, rhythms and music are like tongues. They are just sound like unintelligible syllables and words that other music, maybe other people don't understand at all. But you, musicians uh, are being talked to by God. I'm so convinced of it. But they don't recognize it. They just think, oh man, this is coming for me, and they, they give themselves credit. It's really ego. Um, but a lot of people will say, you know, they came out of a car accident. They, they didn't have one musical bone in their body before the car accident. They're in heaven, they come back, and they can play piano within a matter of weeks. So, you know, God is putting the sound in their head, and they got to figure a way to get that sound out. And that's what I think I've had since I was like eight years old. I was always tapping on things. Like I have this sound inside of me and it doesn't know how to get out. It doesn't know how to get out. And people look at me and say, you know, what, what are you hearing here? You know, and I said, well, I, it's hard to describe. It's inside of me. I hear, you know, some, you know, I used to make rhythms of like this and people would say, that's crazy. But the, I heard this other guy doing it, and uh, Pat Termeyer, and I said, man, that's exactly, that's exactly it, man. You know, you know, maybe they call it beatboxing now, but we didn't know what it was. People thought we were just crazy. So I, I teach a lot about playing what you say. But I notice other great musicians do this too. I was watching B.B. King, the great blues guitarist, and I'm watching his lips. And um, he's sitting there going... 
don't know. It's, I can see it. It's like tongues. I don't know what he's doing, but I can see it. It was like tongues. <laughs> I swear. I don't want to swear, but you know what I mean. I believe the Lord is communicating in a language to them. And they have listened to that language, and they figured out how to get that language out onto their instrument. This is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's mind-boggling. But to other people, they are clueless. Oh, they're, there's mumbling. This is all this mumble-jumble. Doesn't mean anything. But that, inch, that musician will tell you, it's actually taught me how to play. What do you mean it's nothing? It's taught me how to play. You know, I'm not a guitarist, so he hasn't given me that language. But he's given me the language of rhythm. So, I mean, it just flows into me. And I've been trying to teach students this for a long time. And um, maybe they just don't have the Holy Spirit. Maybe that's what it is. So they're not hearing the rhema word of God. And tongues, a lot of people, Christians, a lot of Christians have never experienced tongues. And we just did a whole bunch of blogs on tongues. And I hope to God, Lord, send it to them. They're missing out. They don't have the, even the sword of the spirit. They don't even know how to do battle. Let's see if tongues happens. But like I said, what is tongues to me may not be tongues to you. <laughs> right? And what is tongues to you might not be tongues to me. Understand it perfectly. Wow, go. That's amazing. You know, you can sing. <laughs> I never knew this. Really, you can. Sometimes you'll hear in tongues this musical quality to it. It has a, a melody. Just let it happen. I'm not much of a singer. I'm more of a rhythmic guy. But I, I've noticed that. I just, did you just hear it? Ah. Oh. Sata karamasian the ne shata karamasian the ne on soro konomian the ne shian the ne sekeni soro konomian the ne shakanamian sata karam and you can do it while you're psalming while you're playing because psalm is with or without music without lyrics I should say. Soro konomian the ne shakanamian. You know, I used to, um, you know, a good thing about YouTube and the internet is you can um, be exposed to things you never heard before. And so for a long time, I said, wow, my, I don't really sing in tongues much or pray in tongues, but it's happening more. And especially during really critical moments, go check out the God message about big gun, the big gun and catapults, catapults of Greek fire. So the Lord gives me these things um, during really intense times, I guess, in the spiritual realm.
But I always wondered, you know, what a, I had an interpretation one time when I first was doubting all this, and that was amazing. But, you know, you hear different tonalities and people's tongues are so different. And you listen now, you can listen to people speaking and praying and playing music in tongues. There's a whole website called Worship in Tongues. And uh, you notice different ways of God speaking in tongues. And then you realize, you listen to other languages. I actually, you know, you go out and listen to people speak in different languages. You can actually listen to people speak in all kinds of languages. And you go, wow, that phrasing and that jumbling of words and the, the intonation, and it sounds very much like my tongues. And I would have never guessed this in a million years that, because I've never heard these things before in my life, but it turns out it sounds very similar to bits and pieces of other languages, which is amazing to me. This is amazing to me. And I haven't really, you know, researched this too much, but um, there's all this similar language phrasing and intonation and pitches and, and even the way you pronounce words. It's really something. Uh, so... I have no doubts the Lord is is communicating. And I just gave, when he interpreted it, it was so humbling to me. I would never doubt that again. I would just go with the flow. So we've got through this. We're on the next part is 10A, and then that will be the end of blog topic number 10, 10A and 10B. So let's do that. So put your comments down below. Learn from one another. 1 Corinthians 14, somewhere in 2020 somewhere in there, learn from one another, weighing in together, and all being encouraged together, okay? That's what it's about. Thank you, Lord, for your rhema word that it went out. I know that you're going to do something with your rhema word. Thank you, Jesus, that you know what you're doing. Even when we don't, Paul said, <laughs> we still do it. He still knows there's power in it, not just to build himself up, but building others up, that's the audience two. And then audience three, it's actually producing something of faith in, un, in unbelievers, trusting, relying faith. And that he's going to do that, I know, to someone. Even if it's one person. In the kingdom forever and eternity, it's worth it. <laughs> one person for an eternity, I'm going to meet. And they're going to say, yeah, I was watching you on a drum video of all things, and the Lord spoke to me, produced faith in me, and I, I knew, I knew the way, I knew the truth, I knew the life, isn't that amazing, I'm going to meet that person, and maybe more, you know, Peter, 3,000, not just Peter, it was 120 people, pronouncing all at once the magnificent things of God, the high praise of God. And it was all in tongues. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Bye-bye. God bless you.